NVIDIA launched the RTX 4070 Ti, and it was called out as a bad value by many, which got me thinking, at what price would make it a good value? Let's get into it. NVIDIA just relaunched the unlaunched 12GB 4080 as the RTX 4070 Ti, and the specs are identical to what they showed in the September 2022 announcement. And based on a brief look at some of the benchmarks, the performance is just as they told us it would be. But it was slammed by many as a bad value GPU. Now let's be clear, the performance of this GPU is good, it's just that its pricing is so bad. So what would be a reasonable price to pay for this GPU? Let's see if we can do some comparisons with last gen and go on what I'll call a price walk. First, let's understand what is this GPU? To answer that, we'll start with the die since that is the core and the essence of every GPU. On this generational chart I've shown before where it lays out Nvidia's die sizing strategy for the last 10 years, Fundamentally, they have used three die sizes for all of their GPUs from the 60 series and up. And far to the right, you can see that the 4070 Ti has a die size of just 295 millimeters squared. So that fits within the purple band, which is within the small die size GPUs. And the small die sizes have been typically used for 60 series GPUs. If we look closer at the small die generation that preceded it, the 3060 was a small die GPU that came with 12 gigabytes of VRAM. The 4070 Ti is the new generation small die GPU with 12 gigabytes of VRAM. So the 4070 Ti is nothing more than a small die GPU with 12 gigabytes of VRAM. Now if we take these pics of the PCB from Tech Power Up and lay them side by side with the 3060 on the left and the 4070 Ti on the right, a few things stand out. First, the die sizes are remarkably similar. The 4070 Ti is only 19 mm squared larger in size. Second, the power delivery system or VRM is much bigger on the 4070 Ti as it uses an 11 phase VRM versus the 3060's 5 phase VRM. That is easily explained since the 4070 Ti has a graphics card power rating of 285 watts versus the 3060's 170 watt rating. Third, the PCB of the 4070 Ti is huge. The 4070 Ti has a considerable amount of empty space on the board. Look at the large gaps between components. That is an inefficient and wasteful design. Component layout should be more tightly packed. That board does not need to be that large. Finally, the MSRP price difference of $329 versus $799, it is an absolute massive difference of $470. To understand the cost of the die between the two, I will leverage my previous work in my prior videos. Way back when Jensen declared that Moore's Law is dead and wafer costs are a ton more expensive, I did some research and found that the new TSMC wafers NVIDIA used for the RTX 4000 GPUs are four times more expensive than the 8 nanometer Samsung wafers used in the RTX 3000 GPUs. You can watch those videos if you want to learn the details. I'll just pull the numbers out of the charts. From the die calculator based on the die size and comparable yields, the TSMC die in the 4070 Ti is 3.9 times more expensive and is $94 higher in cost. To understand the impact to cost due to the higher graphics card power and larger cooler, Let's see if we can find a similar GPU from the 30 series that is comparable. Looking at the lineup, we see that the 3070 Ti actually has a graphics card power rating that is 5 watts higher than the 4070 Ti. That's pretty comparable and close enough. Now let's place the PCB of the 3070 Ti next to the 4070 Ti and compare. You'll notice that the 3070 Ti has a much larger die size than the 4070 Ti, but we already covered the die cost. The 3070 Ti has a 9 phase VRM with 55 amp parts, while the 4070 Ti uses an 11 phase VRM with 50 amp parts. It makes sense that with similar graphics card power that they would have similar power delivery and cooling requirements. So how much more is the power delivery and cooling of the 3070 Ti over the 3060? And what is the right cost basis for a small die GPU with 12 gigabytes of VRAM? Well, we know the 3070 Ti is an overclocked 3070 with a few more CUDA cores and faster VRAM, so let's compare the, to the 3070. Placing them side by side, here we can see the 3070 Ti has larger PCB and beefier 9-phase VRM components along with a larger cooler. 
The 3070 has a nine phase VRM with smaller components and a smaller cooler and the cost delta between the two is $100. We also know that the 3060 Ti is almost identical to the 3070 in its cooler and PCB design. Looking at those two boards side by side, the die is the same size and the 3060 Ti has its VRM cut down to an 8 phase from the 3070's 9 phase VRM. This reduction is seen from just a couple of depopulated components and the coolers themselves are almost identical. In doing these comparisons for the higher graphics card power rating, to go from a 200 watt 3060 Ti to the 220 watt 3070 is only a few dollars for the addition of one VRM, then to go from a 220 watt 3070 to the 290 watt 3070 Ti, it is an additional $100 for the larger VRM components and bigger cooler design. Now the 3060 is rarely available for the MSRP of 329 and some higher price models are closer to $400. To keep this simple, starting from a cost basis of $400 as the 3060 Ti seems reasonable and we won't have to price in additional cost of moving from the 3060's 5 phase VRM to the 3060 Ti's 8 phase VRM. So the base cost of $400 is a conservative estimate for the cost of a small die GPU with 12 gigabytes of VRAM. With all of these comparisons, let's see if we can put that all together to determine what is a reasonable cost for the RTX 4070 Ti, which is this generation's small die GPU with 12 gigabytes of VRAM and a sub 300 watt graphics card power. Let's go on a price walk. As we just established, the base cost starts at $400 for a small die GPU with 12 gigabytes of VRAM. Now we need to account for an upgraded VRM and cooler to something close to the 4070 and its 285 watt graphics card power. And from the difference that we saw in the 290 watt 3070 Ti, we would add $100 to the base cost for a total of $500. Then we would need to account for the higher die cost due to the use of TSMC's advanced four nanometer wafers that are more expensive than the previous generation. That cost increase is $94 so now our total is just under $600. The last one I want to address is the use of GDDR6X memory in the 4070 Ti versus the GDDR6 in the 3060, along with any additional inflation we may want to consider. Let's start with the GDDR6X memory. GDDR6X memory was more expensive when it was first introduced on the high-end GPUs like the 3080 and 3090 back in 2020. However, that may not be as significant now that we are in 2023. Case in point, in November of 2022, NVIDIA released a new 3060 Ti that upgraded its RAM from GDDR6 to GDDR6X, and there was no mention of any price increase at all. In this article at Video Cards, the upgrade to the GDDR6X was going to be offered at the same price as the original GDDR6. So it would appear that more than two years later, the price of GDDR6X must have come down to the point where the cost is inconsequential such that NVIDIA does not have to raise prices when swapping over to this memory. Also, I could argue that the $100 increase from the 3070 to the 3070 Ti also included the change from GDDR6 to GDDR6X memory and is already baked into the estimate but that may not satisfy everyone, so at most I would add $40 for the X. Finally, let's talk about inflation. I started with a base price of $400, which is much higher than the MSRP of the 3060 at $329. Currently on Newegg, the prices of many 3060 cards are well under $400, so I could argue inflation is more than covered by the higher base price that we started with at $400. But what about inflation on the bigger cooler and VRM components? Well, since the recession started last year, the prices for copper and aluminum used in the construction of the cooler, as well as the basic electronic components for VRMs, has seen their prices trend downward as the demand for them has significantly reduced. I could argue that $600 would be the high-end price for a small die GPU with 12 gigabytes of VRAM and a sub 300 watt graphics card power rating. However, for those who like to argue inflation, 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 I also went to the inflation calculator as a worst case scenario. $600 from two years ago would now be priced up 10% to $660. So the absolute high end for adding in inflation and money in for the X for GDDR6 memory, then my absolute highest price would be to add another $100. 
From the price walk, a conservative and generous estimate places the 4070 Ti firmly in the $600 price range. Anything more than $700 and it's way overpriced for what it is, and that's a small die GPU with 12 gigabytes of VRAM and a sub 300 watt graphics card power rating. By the way, if you like analysis videos like this, please hit that like button and consider subscribing and let me know in the comments below if you think the price of the 4070 Ti should be closer to $600, $700, or somewhere else. I'm interested to get your thoughts. I'll have more to say about the performance and value of the RTX 4070 Ti in an upcoming video once I've had a chance to process the numbers. And I'm curious as to the availability of the 799 MSRP, or if we'll see more cards at $899 price range available and in stock. I'll then look at it from the value perspective to judge the goodness of this GPU from what is most available. It's clear that too many reviewers followed Nvidia's lead and compared this GPU to Halo type products that do not typically offer value. The repeated comparisons to over $1,000 GPUs like the 3080 Ti, the 3090, the 3090 Ti are not appropriate. This is exactly what Nvidia wants of their reviewers. As I've shown before, these four-figure GPUs provide the lowest performance for your dollar and thus offer the worst value of the RTX 3000 generation. Remember, if you compare something to crap, the only thing that you can conclude is if something is more crappy or less crappy. To judge if something is good value, you need to compare the 4070 Ti to something that represents good value. And I'll cover that next time. Thank you all so very much for watching. Stay safe and I will see you in the next one.